Well, hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host and the Private Money Authority. And if this is your first time to the show, I want to give you a special welcome. Here on the show, we talk about everything related to real estate investing. We talk about all kinds of deals. We talk about single family houses, apartments, commercial, land, self storage, and on and on and on. And if you've been following and listening in for a little while, you know I've had just some amazing guests and experts here on the show. And today is no exception. But before I bring on my special guest today, I've got a free gift for everybody. And that is if you are looking for more funding for your deals, regardless of what your mortgage broker or your hard money lender or such might say, I've got a free on demand online class that gives you the five steps that shows you exactly. I went from having no funding to over $2 million in funding in less than uh, 90 days. So you can check it out and get right on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. So with that, I am so excited to have as my guest today, a good friend of mine. Also, we're in a mastermind group. His name is Lane Kawaoka, and he currently owns 2,600 units, as in apartments and et cetera, across the United States. What you're going to love about listening to Lane today is that he is truly a virtual investor, meaning he lives in Hawaii, but all of his investments are, in the, are elsewhere in the United States. So he recently quit his day job as a professional engineer and he is now enjoying the wealth and the freedom that I know all of you all are looking for. So what Lane does is he partners with investors who want to build their portfolio, but are too busy to mess with the tenants and the toilets and the termites, et cetera, by curating opportunities in his company, which is called the UE Deal Pipeline Club, where his investors have personal access to him and know that Lane is personally putting his money on the line too as well. Well, his pipeline club has acquired over $155 million of real estate, and it's acquired it by syndicating over $15 million of private equity just since 2016. So he's also another great connection, as I am, for in this world of private money. So what Lane does is he reverse engineers the wealth building strategies that the rich use to the middle class via the Top 50 Investing Podcast which you can check out at simplepassivecashflow.com. And Lane's mission is to help hardworking professionals out of the rat race, one free strategy call at a time. So with that, Lane, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Jay. Aloha. Uh, aloha. I love it. I love it. Like, what's that thing you call when you put them around the neck and they welcome you to Hawaii? Oh, it's when you get Alay. Me. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, uh, as I said, everybody, Lane and I are in a um, high-end mastermind group, and we've gotten to know each other. And in fact, we were in the same focus group at our last mastermind meeting. And I was just very, very intrigued with Lane and what he's got going on, and it's therefore invited him here to the show. So whether you are a investor with capital or if you are a real estate investor and you're just sort of tired of going to the local RIA club, hanging around some broke people and you actually want to change what that looks like, you're definitely going to want to tune in today closely and learn how to connect with Lane. So Lane, give us your background story. How did you get, well, first of all, before you give us your background story, give us an overview of what you've got going on in this world of, of real estate investing. I mean, you've got over 2,600 units. What does that look like? Yeah. So I'm kind of more of an evolved buy and hold investor. Instead of buying, you know, one-off single-family homes these days, I get sent apartment deals that get syndicated, and I get to know the operators and sponsors, and I do my due diligence, run the numbers, get the P&Ls and rent rolls, and I see if I want to invest and bring along my investors with me. I got you. So you just said uh, through syndication, just to make sure everybody understands what we're talking about. What do you mean when you say syndication? Yeah, so a lot of these properties that, you know, say you're buying a 100-unit building, you know, you're going to need a couple million dollars with down payment and, you know, potentially funding from someone like yourself. But, you know, you're going to 
get that private equity raise to get the big loan with the bank who controls 80% of it, and you're going to pick up a $5 million property. Most I people don't have $2 million lying around, nor is it very smart to, uh, you know, most of my investors, we go by this principle. We don't put any more than 5% of our net worth into any one deal. Right. You know? So we diversify it over a multitude of these type of syndications. So really what we're saying when you say syndication, what we're talking about is using other people's money, private money, and having them invest into the deals with you, right? Right, right. So yep. we create a couple of asset classes for general partners and limited partners. You know, limited partners, very low liability. They don't do anything other than uh, put bring your money in and check some monthly statements. And hopefully we all get to the destination, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you're living in Hawaii. None of your investments are there. All of your commercial properties are elsewhere in the United States. So how do you decide where you want to invest and where to go look for deals? Yeah, I mean, my first criteria is cash flow. So the rent to value ratio is kind of what governs where I even start looking. So just like when I was buying single family homes, you know, I'm looking for a hundred thousand dollar house that rents for at least a thousand dollars a month, because at that point I know I can pay all my expenses, all my mortgage expenses and have a little bit buffer there to be able to cash flow. because, you know, let's face it. I, I think a recession is coming up in the future. And, you know, even if the price goes down a little bit, I still want to be able to cash flow. Sure. That makes sense. So is there any particular area of the country or cities that you are focusing on or not focusing on? Yeah. I mean, most of the, the deals that I kind of look at are in the South, Southeast, a lot of more of the red States where it's very landlord friendly and a lot of blue collar job force growth out there, a lot of manufacturing. Some of these places might be more tertiary markets that are people are less hear less about. You know, like a Huntsville, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, Gulfport, Mississippi, a Lake Charles, Louisiana. You know, those are typical markets that we like to target as emerging markets. I got you. So let's say, you know, you've, you've determined a particular city or area or the Southeast that you want to focus on. So where do you go find the deals? I mean, is, are there websites that you use? Do you use direct mail campaigns? I mean, if somebody is starting out, where do they go look? Yeah. I mean, if you're starting out, I mean, I hate to say this, but you don't have a shot. I mean, I think in single family homes, we can all agree most deals, 80% of them are found off market in the commercial realm, over 50 units, 80% of deals are controlled by brokers. Unless you've closed a hundred or 200 units before you ain't going to get a shot at closing this next one. People are saying, well, what about the other 20%? that are out there. It's like, yeah, you can direct market a sophisticated seller who owns an apartment, but it, unless that property has some huge issues and, you know, I target properties that are 90% occupied or more so I can get that qualified for that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac non-recourse lending. I won't really want to deal with those 20% problem properties, even though they're out there. So right. it, it's right. an unfair game. Yeah. So you say if you've never done one of these deals, it's going to be very hard for you to break in. So how does somebody start? Well, I mean, that's where most of our investors, they've done a bunch of single family homes. They've built up their net worth to be half a million, million dollars or more. They've gotten sophisticated in terms of they know the risk of real estate and they know how, under, how it works but then they come into deals as a passive investor and they invest anywhere from $30,000 to $50,000 into a deal. And it's kind of buying your money, your, your way into a big company, but it's, you know, you know, the operators in the circumstances. Right. So in other words, to really get started in this game, you need to be partnering up. Someone starting out needs to be like partnering up with someone like you that's already got the relationships that already knows the ropes that already knows how to do the workings of the deal, right? Right. And yeah, because we follow, we follow SEC protocol and there's a you know, big thing about, you know, mass marketing out there. So a lot of it is you have to have a pre-existing relationship with the sponsors you're going to work with. 
Right, um, right. Most deals out there, 90 to 97 percent of deals are for non-accredited investors, but you need to have a pre-existing relationship. Exactly. I got you. So what's a realistic rate of return that people can anticipate to get in these types of deals? You know, from the get-go, a lot of these properties with prudent leverage on it, you're cash flowing, you know, high single digits, you know, maybe 8%. That's usually what these properties will belong at. Of course, cap rate compression is kind of taken over and it's, it's, it's harder to find these properties, which is why you've got to get about a thousand properties to find one that actually works. But the kind of deals that we kind of focus on are deals that are cash flowing today, but there's some kind of value add opportunity. For example, you may be putting about $4,000 into every unit with new paint, new flooring, and then just taking a stick on a pig. So that we can raise those rents fifty, a hundred dollars to get that bump in net operating income, which in commercial real estate, that's what the value of property. Your net operating income divided by your cap rate equals your market price. So Lane, you know, we hear people in your space and apartments talking about primary, you know, secondary, you know, other types of markets. So what's your comment and thought about, you know, should you invest in particular kinds of markets or not invest in particular kinds of markets? Yeah. So, I mean, just to kind of define it for folks who don't know what, you know, primary, secondary, tertiary markets are. Primary markets are your top tier markets like Los Angeles, Hawaii, New York, San Francisco, Seattle. You're not going to find the rent to value ratios out there to be able to cash flow. Now, you know, I'm not going to knock anybody's strategy in terms of investing, but my strategy is I want to cash flow on the property because my number one rule is not to lose money. You know, <laughs> that's a good rule. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that whole, you know, investing in those kind of markets. Yeah. Everybody wants to live in a place like Seattle or San Francisco. And generally the, the prices are going to be going up, but you know, we all seen what happened in the past and there's always going to be another recession where the prices kind of tank again. I would rather skew my portfolio to more of, hey, the property creates more rental income than it has in its expenses and it can support itself irregardless of what the market price is. And when I can do that, I can sell at the right time whenever I want at the, my price I want to be in. So to do that, you need to go to a little bit off the beaten path to secondary markets like Birmingham, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Memphis, Little Rock, or tertiary markets, which are you know, about 50, 100,000 in population. Like, you know, I guess El Paso is probably a larger tertiary market, but Lake Charles, Louisiana, Huntsville, Alabama would be good examples of the tertiary market. All right, I got you. Now, so that's the markets. So let's talk about for a moment, the different kinds of properties or assets. So, you know, in the commercial world, you hear people talking about class A assets, class B assets, class C assets. First of all, define for everybody, what are these different types of classes of assets and what should you invest in? Yeah, so the A class are your brand new properties. These are the luxury assets that you know are usually brand new builds built anywhere from the last 20 years till now. The class B assets are kind of your 1980s, 1990s vintage, a little bit older. And then the class C assets are like your 1950s to 1970s. You know, it doesn't go by age. There's no hard and fast rule. But you know, you talk to a broker, of course, they're going to bump up the rating on you for one grade, right? But, you know, investors, you know, kind of know this lingo and they can kind of know what kind of class of building it is. But, you know, just like how I said, you don't invest in primary markets. You don't really want to be investing for class A luxury. We kind of target class B and C because that's where we can get a bargain and we're not competing with unsophisticated investors just looking for a trophy asset. That makes sense. Now, you've mentioned a couple of times, you know, there's another recession coming. And of course, there always is. Nobody knows when for sure. But I know that you practice what you preach and you invest in what you would call recession proof assets. So other than, say, apartments or rentals, 
have you got any other, of course, nothing's guaranteed, but anything, any other, what you would refer to as recession proof assets? Yeah. I mean, another option are like mobile home parks. You know, I think when you talk about mobile home parks, people think about trailer homes, which, you know, it scares a lot of people off. And that's a good sign when people are scared, unsophisticated, dumb money doesn't follow. So mobile home parks in a recession, what you're thinking is people are going to, you know, the A class people are going to move to the Bs, the Bs are going to move to the Cs and move into mobile home parks. It's an asset class that they aren't going to build any more of because of, a, you know, no politician wants to be responsible for permitting a mobile home park. And also mobile home parks don't generate revenue for the city. So cities and counties don't want them. So they're a you know, most people in America, believe it or not, make under $30,000 and they need good housing like mobile home parks. That's one form of, you know, I'm kind of getting into that a little bit. Um, I know apartments the best, but I understand it's smart to invest in different asset classes. It's still sort of impacted by the economy. If you want to really go to the deep end and get totally non correlated with the economy, I would say life settlement investing would be another good one you know, investing off people's life insurances. When they die, you get paid. You know, there's that saying out there, nothing guaranteed more than death and taxes, right? Right. Interesting. Interesting. Now, I heard you mention this a few minutes ago, but I want to drill down on it. You referred to the rent to value ratio, and that's, you know, a common phrase in the world of commercial. So first of all, explain to everybody, what do you mean by rent to value ratio? And then what is your rule of thumb on what the ratio needs to be for the deal to make sense? Yeah. So, you know, just a quick example. Some of the first properties when I was purchasing rental properties was a hundred thousand dollar house that rented for a thousand dollars a month. So the rent to value ratio is you take the monthly rent divided by the purchase price and that's the, the rent to value ratio. You're looking for something 1% or higher. 2% is awesome, but it's sort of hard to find in good areas. That's not a war zone, but you know, you're going to have to put it into the spreadsheet and go down but line by line and every expense and income. But from a quick and dirty way of doing this, the, the rent to value ratio above 1% is a good indicator that you'll still cash flow. Now I invest off cash flow. That may not be your, your listeners personal strategy, but when I'm investing off cash, I look for that 1% indicator, you know, like here in Hawaii, you know, this million dollar house rents for $3,000 a month. That's a 0.3% rent <laughs> that, works. Ratio. that doesn't fit your formula, does yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's California will say no bueno, you know, that doesn't work. <laughs> right. No mas. <laughs> I got you. And you know, I, I know this about you, Lane, and that is, you know, it wasn't too long ago that you retired from your day job as an engineer, but you've been building this, you know, empire of real estate assets while doing a day job. How in the world do you do that? How do you find the time to do the, you know, actionable items that you got to do in order to, you know, build this kind of investment company while you're working full time? Yeah. I mean, when I was just picking up single family homes, my first five, seven years, you know, I used property management companies, you know, they're well worth the 10% of your income that you bring in. Someone told me that, you know, you don't do things unless you can scale it to seven figures. You know, single family homes are a great way to get started, especially turnkey rentals. You know, like my first 20 podcasts were all about turnkey rentals, how I started. But as your net worth grows, you kind of drift into more syndications and private placements like all I have. And yes, we use property managers, but there's also asset managers who are another layer of managers who kind of make sure we're doing the right thing with the asset. And they are partners aligned with the passive investors. So everybody has skin in the game. And that's a key component that I don't invest without. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, Lane, I know we put together a special URL for my listeners, which is www.jayconner.com forward slash Lane, L-A-N-E. And tell our audience, what is that, that URL address and why would they want to go there? Yeah. So one thing that I've kind of pretty much the only product I've made is, you know, 
your network is your net worth is what they say. And I work with high paid professionals who have money, most of which are accredited. And you're, you know, to get access to these deals, you've got to build up your network. Unfortunately, the worst place to go is these free internet forums and the local real estate club, because let's face it, they're just a bunch of broke people, you know? How do you get, how do you find this profession? You know, they're not, they're not going out to these things for happy hour or whatnot. I use my podcast, which attracts passive investors and created this little mastermind. Excellent. So folks go to www.jayconner.com forward slash Lane, L-A-N-E, and that will get you in contact with Lane and have a strategy session with him and have the opportunity to work together with him on commercial projects and invest if you like and get connected and truly learn what passive income is about. So Lane, parting comments, last piece of advice for our uh, listeners and audience. Yeah, I mean, if people want to book a call, my email is lane at Simple Passive Cash Flow. Just make sure you tell me that you know, Jay sent you because you know, I think that's a big thing. That's why you and I joined these different masterminds, right, Jay? Like it's all about like it's a small world out there and you know, you, you never really want to work with them, some random person. <laughs> so at least well, if I know they you, came from you, you know, I, I know that they're, you know, I can kind of follow the breadcrumbs of what kind of <laughs> what they're all about. Well, you know, so our viewers have definitely heard me say this before, but I don't know who came up with the phrase that opposites attract. That's stupid. I mean, I want to hang around people that are like me, right? So yes, birds of the same feather do flock together. So anyway, Lane, I'm sure you'll be hearing from a good number of our audience members. Lane, thank you so much, man, for taking the time to come here on the show and tell folks uh, what you got going on. Yeah, yeah. We'll catch up in a couple months there in San Diego. Good to see you again. You got it, Lane. Thank you so much for coming on and I'll see you soon. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you for joining in for another episode. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.